There's actually a federal law that says what the primary duties of the combatant commander are. Number one is to plan for the employment of the armed forces, so we, we're rigorous planning machines at U.S. Space Command. Number two is to take actions as necessary to deter. And then number three is to command assigned and attached forces. So we think command and control is so important, and there's still work to do to optimize our team as part of the broader team on command and control that we're going to designate 2025 as our year of command and control. The last time we've signed a strategic space command and control CONOPS was 2017. Calendar years, that was only seven years ago, but that might as, might as well have been 70 years ago, given and all the change that we've had since then. That was before the Space Force was created, before U.S. Space Command was created. So we're going to get after updating that and having all the right conversations to make sure we're where we need to be. Additionally, we've been working with the Department of the Air Force, the Space Force, and all the acquisition organizations to really get after closing the relevant kill chains. We, we saw that there were gaps with really good sensors being acquired, command and control being acquired, effectors being acquired, but the horizontal integration wasn't quite coming together. But through that work, I'm really happy with the progress we're making, and we need to continue to laser focus on that in 2025 as well.